Welcome everybody. On the 80th anniversary, 1,000 months since it came out, I'm going to share with you one of my favorite comics, Marvel number one. You know, uh, I was always hoping to get a, a complete one. And, you know, someday I might do that. You never know. Um, but as time went on, I decided I'm just going to go for a coverless. You know, these things are very rare. Like, the more I looked at it, they were, there's less than, I think, less than 70 on the census, CGC census, less graded. Um, I like to multiply that number by, like, three or so to, I don't know estimate a actual number of existing copies so you know if there's the more i thought about you know less than 200 of these perhaps in the world i'd love to have a coverless so luckily this year i was able to get one of these and uh I couldn't be more happier than I am right now to look look at this because anytime I get to spend some time with this comic, it's just like magical. It's just it's amazing that I'm holding in my hands, you know, something from so long ago. So uh, I'll work my way through this thing. First page is awesome. Looks like uh, you know inspiration for the cover right there. Now, I'll tell you a little history about this book. Um, so all these stories in here were created at a, a little studio called uh, Funnies Incorporated. Now what they did was they had a group of artists and uh, writers, and they would just make comics and sell them to other publishers, like Centaur. Um, I'm not sure if exactly what the other what the other uh, publishers were. Uh, let me let me show you this real quick. Um, yeah, let's see. So they were doing this June 1938. This is cover. Uh, this is a published date, and uh, as you can see, Action One only came out a month earlier. So, they were right there with them, doing comics. Um, this is a really great one, Bill Everett cover. One of the first centaurs. Uh, so they would, you know, sell to these publishers, and then the publishers would just, you know, make it happen, and then they'd uh, all make their cash. Um, and what they really wanted to do the uh i think his name was jacques something oh man i don't have the name on it right now but the uh kind of founder and and owner of uh funnies incorporated he wanted to publish his own um ultimately cut out the mini middleman you know everyone back then was trying to make as much money as possible there is still the tail end of the uh Depression, Great Depression, 1939. So, uh, yeah, and this is about April. Well, not this book, but um, about April is when the ball really started moving for this book. So, let's see what came out in April. Right, here we go. So, it's been about, what, about a year give or take, since Action 1, and Action 1 is really what phew, went, the comics just went crazy at that point. They were selling like nuts, um, so a year went by, and uh, people were starting to really get into it. Not too many, though. I mean, this is uh, when Action 1 came out. Look how many books were published that month. Still, not too many, right? Um... Now, notable here, let's see, April, Detective, just came out, Batman. Um, Superman had already been going for at least, yeah, almost a year in action. Those numbers have been 
you know, really high as far as like sales numbers. Um, and funnies, you know, like I said, they were trying to, uh, get their own publishing, do their own publishing. And what they tried to do was ma they made a book, they compiled a book of a bunch of stories and tried to pres presented it to, uh, owners of movie theaters, and this is what is called Motion Picture Funnies Weekly. Now, this is somewhat what led them to Marvel One. Now, this book was black and white, and they it was never actually published. It was, uh, they made some samples, and they gave them to um, owners of movie theaters, and the idea was that they would make these books for them and then they would give them out to the to the people in the movie theaters and back then I, from what i understand the kids and whoever uh stayed in the movie theater for a while like 5 hours or so i'd love to get more info on that but uh it was like an all day thing i guess but and it'd be interesting to see how many theaters there were actually but um Apparently, I think the uh, theaters were kind of competing with each other, right? So this was a ploy. They wanted uh, the movie theaters to get these comics from them, and then they would uh, give them out. And so more people would, you know, go to their theater, perhaps. But that just didn't work. The movie theaters didn't want to do it. So... Frank, uh, Jacques, I wish I knew his last name, <laughs> or maybe that is his last name, anyway, he kind of gave up and was like, you know what, we just, we can't publish, let's, we gotta find, let's just get more people to buy these books from us, buy these stories from us, um, so around that, it was right after this that kind of fell through that famous funnies and what's interesting about that famous funnies is that inside that it was the submariner story that actually is is in here um it was in black and white it was only eight pages um but since it was never published or whatever um they considered the interiors of this book something they could just use as you know as catalog more stuff they could sell um so they shopped they put a bunch of effort into going out there and uh, getting some buyers for their books. And one of that, one there was a manager, Frank Torpy. He was friends with Martin Goodman. Now, Martin Goodman, I don't know if you know his name, but uh, he's the publisher of Marvel Comics, which, you know, didn't exist at the time. This did exist at the time. What he did, Martin Goodman was a publisher of Pulps, and that's what these are. This is... Um, he did several pulps. Uh, I think he had, uh, 1938, he had over 27 different, um, either 27, um, different books came out in 38 or 27 different titles. I think it was 27 total. But pulp info is pretty hard. Uh, hard to come by. So, pulps are... <laughs> It's this whole other thing. It's awesome. But uh, anyway, he was a big publisher of this. He kind of came from nothing and, and, and built his own like empire. And uh, Frank Torpy uh, hung out with him and convinced him. He's like, hey, look, you know, Superman. Look, there's these new things called comic books. Uh, Superman action comics has been selling like crazy. They're, they, they're coming out with this new thing, like, called the Batman, that's, that's supposed to, they think that's gonna sell like crazy, uh, um, I hear that Superman is gonna get his own book, so they're gonna have Action Comics plus Superman, it's selling so well, so you really need to get on it, and guess what, my company, we have a bunch of artists, writers, we make the stories, and uh, you, all you have to do is publish. You don't have to do anything. All you do is publish. You buy the, them from us. 
publish it, boom. And, uh, you know, maybe he showed him that Funnies Weekly. That would be cool. Um, but anyway, Martin, Martin Goodman said, all right. And, uh, you know, uh, Torpy said it'll take us about one or two months. And, you know, I, I, speculation is that he uh, knew they would use reuse some of that stuff from the uh, Motion Pictures Weekly uh, to get it going that fast. But the SMA, they did it. Um, so they started... I believe that Human Torch was not... Well, you know, there's really not that much information about this that I could find. But I it sounds to me, from what I've read, that they started uh, Carl Berg, Borgos. Borgos? I don't know how to say that name. Uh, started making this right away because some some of the stuff they kept they just had a backlog of of, of stories and then they'd wait uh, until um someone you know would order them and then they'd use it like uh the submariner they wanted um bill everett the artist on submariner to create stuff like Superman, because that just came out. So he was busy cranking away. They were making stuff. Um, now, I do know the artists for this book got paid eight, around eight to ten dollars a page. <laughs> it's pretty funny. Um, an interesting thing was that they, uh, they called these stories, they, they just called them characters. Like, I'm making a new character. I'm going to make a new character for this book. My new character is the Human Torch. And, uh, there was, because there was no, the term superhero didn't even exist. Just, I found fascinating. That was from an article in Alter Ego. Yeah, I think it was a few years before they called them superheroes. This is a really... Really cool origin, Human Torch. He basically... Well, I mean, you can look it up, but... It's, uh... The characters in the Marvel stuff were very different than, like, DC's. Um, if DC was kind of like the hope, you know, hope, uh... Hopeful heroes... Batman, well, Batman's not so hopeful, but, uh, Superman. Um, Marvel's characters were more, um, oh, angry, outcasts, like Human Torch. They, they wanted to kill him. There's actually a, a page, yeah, here, um, look at that. This will be a better world without you, Torch. A policeman shoots him right in the head. <laughs> they weren't doing that to Superman. Um, they were outcasts. Um, a lot of people were angry, confused, uh, devastated from uh, being in the Depression. And uh, this spoke to some of those people, you know, that had like this angst. Um, it was more of a, and that was present in the pulps at the time. But the uh, DC heroes didn't really convey that, you know, other than Batman. I think Batman definitely did. Um, this is another one, Angel. Martin Goodman really liked Angel. He, he, for whatever reason, really liked this character. And that's part of why the Submariner didn't appear on covers for a while was because he kept really wanting the angel to succeed. Here's a Kazar. <laughs> Kazar actually had a pulp uh, a few years before this, I think in 36, from, uh, and, and this was called Red Circle. That's what most of his pulps are published under that name. Uh, let's see, so I'll move on. So, 
so in June, this, this whole book was done, right? Uh, everything was new except for my favorite. Oh, and you know, this is, before I get to my favorite, this is interesting. So if you read Marvel uh, 1000, you'd see, you'd recognize this, the Max Raider has what I guess the Eternity Mask or whatever. Should be interesting. Anyway, you'd have to read that to uh, see what I'm talking about. But So this was really my favorite. Bill Everett created this. So this, again, this was for Funnies. Uh, the uh, the uh, motion picture Funnies Weekly. He created this black and white for them, for that book. Um, it was eight pages. Um, Martin Goodman wanted to fill up this whole issue, so they wanted to make this uh, 12 pages. So he had to create four more. Um, and, uh, you know, his, his art, it might be hard to tell from this, but really, if you look into it, I mean, his artwork was way more advanced than most artists at the time. Uh, now, <laughs> he was using this advanced technique uh, with chemicals and whatnot that uh, provided like these cross hatchings to provide uh, to, like depth and, and by different values. He wanted to make it feel like more three dimensional. Um, and I think it, if you see the black and whites, it, it really did look nice. Now the thing with this is Martin Goodman was notorious for trying to save money, so he he uh, went with um, one of his I think one of his pulp guys to print this, and the guy had never done a comic before, and uh, a lot of Marvel ones were totally miscut like this, and they couldn't handle the the colors right, like and it ended up. Everett's art ended up looking really muddy like this. Totally not what he, he planned on doing. But you could tell, I mean, his line work is really tight. He had lots of detail. It was very fine. Um, it was certainly advanced for the time. Um, and really, Submariner, I mean, was nothing like the heroes of the time. And he reflected like an anger that I talked about earlier. Um, he, Everett purposely wanted to make him different than Superman. Um, you know, his first, I mean, really this first story is pretty crazy when you think about it. He, uh, you know, it opens with him just swimming around a bunch of guys, um, going down into the water, exploring and, uh, some Mariner finds them and basically kills them. So within four pages, your main uh, character is, has murdered two people. And, uh, you know, he's the first anti-hero ever created in comics. Um, you know, anti-hero is like half hero, half villain, you know. But people could really relate to it at the time. And again, later, you know, the Punisher and Wolverine are uh, very successful anti-heroes lived later. Now, as you can see, this is the uh, eighth page. And right here, there, it was like, continue next week. But they covered that up. And then these are the four new pages he made for this. Imagine that, eight, eight dollars page, huh? And so Namor dives into the ocean again on his way to further adventures in his crusade against white men. Yep, <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, let's see, so, I mean, this is a lot, a lot to cover with this book, but, uh, you know, this came out um, August 31st, 1939, the day before um, Germany invaded Poland, which was the start of World War II. Um, 
Germany had just signed a pact with um, Soviet Union to uh, kind of not fight each other, and he went through with it. And then the next day, uh, you know, France and Britain declared war. It was another oof, almost two years. It was yeah, over two more years since till America joined in. Um, this first came out in October and sold 80,000 copies. And it sold so well that Martin Goodman uh, sent it back, print more, 800,000. And, you know, it was at that point where he's like, wow, you know what? I'm going to think about how can I make even more money? You know, he was just super into making money. Uh, he uh, decided to try to cut out Funnies Incorporated. And uh, probably within a month of this hitting stands, um, at least the November issue, he uh, cut out, he was really trying to cut them out. So he, and if you see here, so this is a reprint, but, you know, a copy, but the first one had October right here. And then for the second print, they uh, <laughs> filled that in with black and added in November. Uh, the uh, October one is sought after a lot more. It doesn't have a, a different entry or anything in the CGC uh, census or anything, but a lot of people will pay a little premium more for that. Um, now, uh, what else? So he hired a guy named Joe Simon, who was working at Funnies, uh, to come to him and be his editor. And they started to make their own stories. And, uh, you know, after a while, uh, Simon was the total editor. He, uh, he brought over Jack Kirby and, you know, about a year after this, a little longer than a year after this, they made Captain America. They made some other books. Um, you know, he was doing lots of stuff to cut out funnies. Uh, he, uh, oh yeah, he, he changed the name from Marvel to Marvel Mystery. He was just, he was just distancing himself from that. And then, uh, as you can see, ended up being this. So that's pretty much the story. Thanks, guys.